an incredible plane crash into the World Trade Center. That happened within the last few moments. Just a few moments ago, something uh, believed to be a plane crashed into the South Tower of the World Trade Center. We have no idea what it was. It was a tremendous boom. A gigantic sonic boom. The air is filled with hundreds of thousands of pieces of paper that are just sort of floating like confetti. Stuff just started falling like bricks and paper and everything. When I looked over, there was a guy that was on fire. He was like screaming, and I just told him to roll, roll, and he said, he can't. He caught fire as a result of the falling debris? Yeah. Do you have any idea what hit the World Trade Center? We're getting reports that an airplane hit the building. I hear a plane, and all of a sudden, it's going to go right into the World Trade Center. So plane. you saw a plane crash, crash into the side of the World Trade Center? Yes, sir. How big can you tell us? Give us an idea. It would be hard to imagine that a small plane could create that kind of hole in a building like the World Trade Center. These buildings are almost a city block size building. This is a large plane. You're talking about a large passenger commercial large jet. Passenger commercial jet. The Associated Press is now reporting that it was an aircraft. So those are the sounds that people who are, say, 35 years and older awoke to 20 years ago today. They say that every generation has an event. For my parents' generation, they know where they were standing when JFK was shot. For my generation, we know where we were standing when someone said, hey, look at the TV. If you were in the military, you were a pilot and you realize that 747 had hit the World Trade Center, you knew right away that this was no accident. 747s aren't off altitude by 100 feet ever, and this plane was off altitude by several thousand feet. Impossible. So I thought, how do we portray to a generation that didn't experience what we experienced in less than maybe five minutes what we experienced that day, I thought I might tell a story. There's a million stories I can tell. There's about 3,000 very poignant stories I can tell. You see, on that day, just in the Twin Towers alone, there should have been 40,000 people in those two towers. Since only about 3,000, and I say only like it doesn't mean anything, since only about 3,000 people were killed, there's probably 20,000 stories of people scratching their heads. Why wasn't I where I was supposed to be on that day? My laptop, I left it at home. I had to turn and go around. My, sick, my kid was sick. I called him, told him I'd be late for work. Maybe I could tell one of those stories. Maybe I could tell a story of an Army veteran who did three tours in Iraq two tours in Afghanistan, ran over an IED, lost both his legs and arms, and then spent nine months in Bethesda Hospital. And now he gets a disability check and less, is less than I make as a school teacher. No, that wouldn't get their attention. Let me tell you a story about Ann Campana. She was a neighborhood friend. I mowed her parents' lawn. Her parents' lawn was as big as this football field, plus another 25 yards. I made $5 for mowing that. I thought I was stealing from her. She would come home. She was in her 40s. She was a photographer for National Geographic, which is to say one of the best in the world. And that particular morning when she took off from Washington, D.C., she had 30 underprivileged school children. They had permission to go to a remote island in California and photograph rare birds. And she called up her husband. And she said, my plane has been hijacked. And he said, oh my God, I was afraid of that. There's planes that have hit New York City. And we don't know what's going on. And so they talked for about five minutes. I don't know exactly what they talked about. What do two people that have committed their lives together for 25 years talk about when they know it's their last five minutes. 
We'll get back to that story. I'll get to another story. I worked a 16 hour day that day, like just about everybody in the military did, making this plan and that plan and this plan and that plan and this plan and that plan and this plan and scratching that plan and starting this plan over. And then I went home and my three year old daughter, who was very precocious, which means ahead of her time, she shouldn't have known what was going on, said, Daddy, why those evil men fly those planes? No, she didn't say evil, that's my word. Why did those men fly those planes into the World Trade Center? Everybody who's ever served in the military knows why. I knew why, but I couldn't tell her because she was three years old. But I can tell you, it's because evil is real and it exists in the world. So for 20 years, we've had nothing like 9-11, and I hope none of you ever experienced what we experienced that day, ever. But if we don't, it's because men and women like the ones that are standing on the field at the 20, at the 10, at the 30, at the 40 yard lines in front of you, and your instructors who drove you here today are standing watch and keeping guard and taking the war to them. And so we may think this war is over because we made some declaration and pulled out of some place that maybe we should or shouldn't have pulled out of. We think it's over, but I tell you, it ain't over. And if we get complacent, we'll know 9-11 again. Back to my original story, and we'll wrap it up, and we'll sing the national anthem like it's bloody important because it is. If you knew you had five minutes to live, or maybe 10, Something in that range. Who would you call on the phone? What would you talk about? Bow your heads, close your eyes. Pray if you're so inclined or reflect on the question that I just gave you as we pause in a moment of silence. Amen. Please rise for the playing of our national anthem. several hundred first responders who charged into those buildings knowing that they might save several hundred and that they also might die themselves. We have some America's heroes on the field at the 20 and the 30 and the 40 and the 50 and we have the rest of them 
on North Ash Avenue holding up the American flag. So if you know what an echo cadence is, work with me. I say the words, you say them back loudly. Hoorah, first responders! Job well done. Let the games begin. <laughs> 